course, it's Caner Tip Tuesday. And today, this is what you need to know regarding the cane and the empty hand. But before we get started, oh, thank you for that. If you like the content, go ahead, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the little bell icon so that you don't miss any future content. And then avail yourself. You have free resources. Uh, text the letter CCC to the number on the screen. And in less than 24 hours, we will be in a, in a phone conversation with you, finding out what it is that attracts you to what uh, we do here, answering all your questions. Highly recommend you do that before you enroll or purchase anything uh, regarding canes, cane training, etc. And also you have uh, Facebook groups that are open to you. Um, and look at the description uh, below, request entry, we will let you write in. Listen, by far the most requested topic regarding American Cane self-defense today is the empty hand translations. And if you've been following or you've done some research on ACSD, you know that from the onset, three decades uh, now, uh, when I first put this uh, together, it's always been a cane and an empty hand system for the times that you don't have that cane. I want to take a moment and just acknowledge and, and thank um, Shim, uh, one of our caners who did empty hand level one, and he shared um, how he had to use the empty hand uh, skill sets that, that he learned there in an actual altercation that involved knives, uh, six to uh, seven people involved there. And I don't want to, because uh, I believe he'll, he'll be sharing it uh, likely, but um, as I, he did share with me that he used primarily um, at, at number fours in, in, the, in the template system. But I just want to acknowledge and as an example of having been thrown in the water with the sharks and he survived that uh, situation. He was able actually to protect people from that system. So today what I want to uh, share with you what you need to know um, obviously, we've spoken about the when you don't have the tool, you lose uh, the, the reach advantage that you have. So the distance factor is very, um, you know, is different. And we dedicate a whole module to that in the empty hand uh, training. The fact that now this is an impact tool, it seeks bone. Well, that's not necessarily the case with the empty hand. Um, these can get damaged. But here's what I want you to focus on. The way that we use the empty hand, in, in particular, the forearms uh, from here to here, if you analyze this, when you go to defend against anything, this portion from here all the way to your hand is many times what's going to be the primary contact point, whether that individual is coming to you with their empty hands or with some kind of weapon. And the way that we use this with ACSD um, it is a bit different. It is not exclusive in any way, shape, or form. And I know that when you look at these things, you say, oh, that reminds me of XYZ. I'm making things up. Wing Chun, or it reminds me of you know XYZ system, or that's the way we do it in such and such. Well, that's great. Um, not Those things are not did not influence um, ACSD uh, necessarily, but it's great to see that there are similarities and combative truths uh, when it comes to this. But let me give you an example. We don't use the the ulnar bone in ACS. So we don't have anything that looks like the punch is coming and you have this block and then you have a punch. Um, that's one of the, the characteristics. This is not used um, in, in ACSD. We also don't have a strike and, and or a block and then strike model. It, it typically either happens simultaneously right, as you have in the empty hand exercises and drills that we have you do, or we use it as a connection point. Uh, and an example would be, so So if we don't use this, then what is it that we use? So we use the top of the form. Another way of saying that, you know, these are the extensors. Another way of saying that um, is the meaty portion of the form because it has, there's padding there. So instead of coming up here, um, you're going to find something that looks like that in the, the, the contact point. If you put your hand here, then you can see that there's a triangle there. And you're going to hear that uh, a lot in ACSD so that you have something that looks like this, um, where you have the deflection so, and the connection so that then you can go ahead and control. So the first way that it's used 
is actually to deflect as opposed to stopping that strike uh, cold. We don't have, similarly with the cane, anything that looks like this. We just don't have it. Um, and, and I'll get to this in a second, but you see how the center line is, is exposed. Even uh, those of you that follow Sobrevivencia, it's not this. If you just saw this as a slow portion of, of, of the movement, when she has a tool in her hand and you're coming in here, deflecting the tool, you're coming down and raking right into the grip. So it's done this way, uh, covered, covered, and not here. The same thing happens here. We don't have anything. She's coming over the top that looks like this. Again, it's going to be something here and then moving on. The other component to that is that that connection point also takes into consideration any follow-ups that your opponent may have. This is not a bob bag. She has reflexes. And um, I come in here and I go do this and she's good and she stops that. I have to have a way of following that kinesthetically without having to look at the fact that she's grabbing me. I already have to be able to respond or lock or move on from there. So that all involves here. And always you go back to the root. Why was this system? What was the purpose of the system put together? If you ask that question to ACSD caners today, they're gonna to tell you, well, the two reasons he put it together. Number one, he had a major concern for multiple assailants, but he had a major concern for the blade, for the knife, for the knife. Okay, so, so she throws a strike in here. I come in, oh, look at this. She kind of went over, I slip over it, or I come in, but in the process, she escalates down to pull a knife. And you see what the problem is here. Now you understand why we don't use this portion. So I saw some of the cane we corrected um, yesterday in class. See what the problem here is? When she pulls off from there, she's cutting my hand, right? So I don't have that. I don't have anything like this either. This is one of the main reasons why we use here. If you're going to get cut, Right? And, and with a knife, I, I got news for you. I hate saying it that way, but you can expect, you know, if you walk out on skate, that is, uh, uh, that's amazing. Consider that a, a miracle and a blessing. Um, but instead, we're going to use this portion of it. So put, put it away again uh, uh, just for a second so we see how, um, you know, something like that. Boom, you come in here. That was, that was it. Uh, either she stopped, you came over, but here it comes. You come in here now that increases the possibility of coming up. And it all stems from that, she's tapping there from that connection point. And I hate this, by the way. This is a really bad situation to be in. I'm sharing a model um, with you so you understand why it's this. If I get stabbed here, this is not a vital cut, but here, that, that's a different story. So this is why you use this as that connection point to come back around. How do you learn this stuff? Nothing makes me happier than to see. And know for the past two weeks, you have right now the last opportunity in 2023 to get cane trained via the, and the foundational training, which is in that cane at home six week challenge. That's it. This is the last one. It starts October 30th. It's the last one uh, for 2023. And I love that in the past two weeks, everybody who's come on board has chosen also to learn the corresponding empty hand training, the level one that comes with it. That's the way it was put together. That's the full strength course. Um, once you have that, and you have it in the different levels, level two right after we're currently uh, covering a level two for, for the advanced, but that's where you start. Before you do any of that, let's have a conversation first. Let's make sure that that's what you're looking for and that there's a good fit there. But know that today you have the opportunity to when you come up or say, hey, I just want to learn the cane or I want to learn the cane with the empty hand, the full strength ACSD version, the way it was put together, uh, because it makes sense, especially if you have a concern for self-protection. There is a step by step. Um, that's what ACSD is known for. Okay. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, keep caning and stay safe.